Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be doing the number 25 from the AMC 10B of 2014. This problem was also the number 22 from the AMC 12B of 2014. This problem is really quite interesting because even though this problem is clearly a probability problem, which we'll find out as soon as you read the problem, the way to solve this is quite unconventional, and you won't see this on most AMC 10 or even AMC 12 level tests. However, the technique we're about to use to solve this problem is much more common in higher levels of math, like AIME and beyond. And even though this method won't really help you too much on AMC 10 or AMC 12 level tests, it will help you a lot on tests beyond that, and it'll probably help you grow as a problem solver. So, Without further ado, let's get into this intriguing problem. In a small pond, there are 11 lily pads in a row labeled 0 through 10. A frog is sitting on pad 1. When the frog is on pad n, where n is between 0 to 10, it will jump to pad n minus 1 with probability n by 10, and pad n plus 1 with probability 1 minus n by 10. Each jump is independent of the previous jumps. If the frog reaches pad 0, it will be eaten by a patiently waiting snake. If the frog reaches pad 10, it will exit the pond, never to return. What is the probability that the frog will escape without being eaten by the snake? So, this problem starts by laying down a lot of information. And in order to truly understand what the problem is trying to, to get us to understand, we're going to have to draw a diagram. So. The first step in drawing this diagram would be to draw the 11 lily pads labeled 0 through 10 and draw the frog sitting on the first pad. So I'm going to start by doing that, drawing the 11 lily pads and labeling them 0 through 10. So here they are, the 11 lily pads, 0 through 10. And we know that there is a frog on the first one. Here is my gorgeous frog. And this frog, well, he'll jump either to the lily pad to his left, pad n minus 1, which in this case is 0, or he'll jump to the pad to the right, which is n plus 1, or 2. And we can find the probability that he'll jump to the pad to the left, or the pad to the right, based on the problem. It says, the frog will jump to pad n minus 1 with probability of n by 10 and it will jump to pad n plus 1 with probability of 1 minus n by 10. In this case, n is 1, so the probability that the frog jumps to pad n minus 1, or pad 0, is 1 by 10. And that probability that the frog jumps to the pad to his right is 1 minus 1 by 10, which is 9 by 10. Now, the frog is on pad 2. Since he's on pad 2, the probability of him jumping to pad n minus 1 is n by 10. And since n in this case is 2, the probability is 2 by 10, or 1 fifth. Now, since the probability of him jumping to the left, n by 10 is equal to 1 fifth, the probability of him jumping to the right is 1 minus n by 10, which we already computed to be one-fifth. So the probability of him jumping to the right is one minus one-fifth or four-fifths. So now he might be on pad three. If he is on pad three, the probability of him jumping back to the left is now three by ten. And the probability of him jumping to the right onto pad four is one minus three by ten or seven by ten. And now you get the idea of what's going on in this problem we see that the probability of the frog jumping back to whatever pad was before him is the number pad he is on divided by 10. So I forgot to wrote 3 tenths for the third pad, but that's what it would be. For the fourth pad, 
he would have a 4 by 10 probability of jumping back to the third pad, or a two-fifths chance of jumping back to the third pad. And he'll have one minus two-fifths chance of jumping to the fifth pad. So he would have a three-fifths chance. Now it might seem useless to draw on the rest, but I just want to stop at five. So then I could explain something to shorten down our work a little bit. So once he gets to pad five, he'll have a five tenths chance of jumping to pad four, which is just simply one half because five tenths can be simplified down to one half. And he has a one minus five tenths chance of jumping to pad six. So one minus five tenths or one minus one half, which will give us one half. So here we've drawn out all the ways and all the different probabilities for the frog to jump between lily pads from zero to five. And this diagram what we've just drawn out is known as a states diagram. And in a states diagram, you try to relate how the frog will get from one state to the other with respect to different probabilities. So you're probably thinking at this point, what is he talking about? Like, I don't see any states. I don't see any like Massachusetts or Canada or like California. There's no states. And what I'm talking about are different states of being. The frog started out on our first state, which is also our first lily pad. We just have to think of it this way. The frog's first state is his first lily pad. And his zero state is when he gets eaten by the snake. And in order for him to escape, he has to get to the tenth state unscathed without ever getting back to the whatever without ever touching the zeroth lily pad. Or entering the zeroth state. So basically this method counting with states helps us deal with unusual problems like this, where the probability is always changing. And it helps us deal with that by taking each probability as some version of some other probabilities. It takes the probabilities recursively. So we don't actually have to deal with many concrete values. It takes these probabilities like the Fibonacci sequence, which just have a couple concrete values and all the other values are based on those pre-existing values. So just as the Fibonacci sequence generates few, like generates larger terms from its smaller terms, we generate larger probabilities based on larger pro based on the smaller probabilities. So what does this have to do where we are at the problem? So at this point in the problem, we've, had, we've hit an interesting point. Once the frog gets to the fifth lily pad, he could either move on and probably reach the end with a huge slew of various computations, or he could come back with that same slew of various computations. But here's the thing. If you start plugging in numbers, the different probabilities that will occur once the frog jumps on the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 10th lily pad, you'll see that these probabilities are identical to what happens on the 0 through 4th lily pads. So this 5th lily pad is kind of like the middle ground, and it's, this is where everything balances out. So since this 5th, since the entire problem is symmetrical around this 5th lily pad, once the frog jumps on the fifth lily pad, it has a one half chance of surviving or a one half chance of dying. So I'll write this like this. P5, the probability that the frog survives once it enters the fifth, once it lands on the fifth lily pad is one half. But knowing that is not good enough because that is the probability that the frog survives once he lands on the fifth lily pad. But the frog doesn't start out on the fifth lily pad. He starts out on the first lily pad. So we have to find out 
the probability of the frog's survival based on the first lily pad, or P1. And to do that, since we already have a ton of relationships between the zero through fifth lily pad, we can honestly ignore the remaining couple of lily pads. So even though I drew these in initially, they don't really serve much use anymore. So I'm going to delete them. So in the end, we just need to find out the probability of survival, P1, based on the fact that we know that the probability of survival on the fifth lily pad, on the fifth state, P5, is equal to 1 half. So we can do this by recursively defining P4, P3, and P2 in terms of the other probabilities that we know. And then eventually we're going to get to P1, and we'll use that, and we'll use these equations that we defined recursively to solve for the value of P1. So the first equation, which is really quite simple that we already computed for, is the fact that once the frog lands on the fifth lily pad, he has a one-half chance of surviving. So the probability of survival on the fifth lily pad, P5, is equal to 1 half. Now that's good to know, but we need to generate another relationship, and probably another one after that. What is the probability of the frog's survival once he lands on the fourth lily pad? So once the frog lands on the fourth lily pad, there are either two cases that could happen. He has a three-fifths chance of jumping from there to the fifth lily pad and entering the P5 state, or he has a two-fifths chance of jumping to the third lily pad and going into the P3 state. And remember, these P3 states and P5 states these just represent the probability of the frog's survival when he lands on that lily pad. So we've already calculated for what P5 is. P5 is 1 half. But we don't know what P3 is, so we can't solve for that one yet. We can't solve for P4 yet. So this is another equation we got. And in order to solve for P4, we're going to have to find out what P3 is. Now... Let's say our frog is on the third lily pad, P3. He would either jump to the fourth lily pad with a probability of 7 tenths and enter the P4 state, or he would jump on the second lily pad, the lily pad before that, with a probability of 3 10 and enter the P2 state. Once again, since we don't know the value of P4 or P2, we can't solve for P3 at all. So we're going to have to set up another relationship. P2. So once the frog is on PT, P2, he has a 4 fifths chance of jumping onto the third lily pad and, under, and, entering, and like entering the P3 state. So 4 fifths to enter P3. But at the same time, he has a one-fifth chance of landing on the first lily pad and entering the P1 state. And this is good, right? Because we finally got to the variable we were searching for, P1. But once again, we don't have enough information to solve for anything because we don't know what P2 is, we don't know what P3 is. There's nothing we can solve for. Right now we have a systems of we have a system of equation, but we only have one value, and we can't use this to solve all the way for p1. So let's just try def defining p1 the same way we've done with the previous cases. From the first lily pad, where the frog has a probability of survival p1, he has a nine tenths of jumping. He has a 9 tenths ch chance of jumping to the second lily pad and entering a P2 state of survival. But at the same time, he has a 1 tenth chance of jumping to the 0th lily pad and entering a P0 state of survival. So it looks like we're stuck, right? Because 
we only had one value. And we have like six variables. So it's going to be impossible to solve the systems, equa systems of equation for P1 or the probability of the frog survives based on the fact that he's on lily pad one. We need to know at least one more value. And this is where we let our common sense take over. What is this P0 value we we're talking about? That is the probability of the frog survival once he lands on lily pad zero. But remember, near lily pad zero is like this angry snake who, or this patiently waiting snake who will eat him as soon as he lands there. So as soon as the frog lands on P0, he'll die. So the probability of survival once the frog lands on P0 is zero. So wait, now we have two variables and we have this huge systems of equation. So now all that's left to do is to do some algebra and solve for P1. Now I could go through the algebraic procedure of solving for P1 step by step and show you specifically how to do the just the algebraic manipulations to get for P, solve for P1. But to be quite honest, at this point, the problem mainly consists of just substitution and bash. And I do not believe it would be productive for me to show how to just substitute and bash for this caliber of a problem. I'll leave this final part of solving for P1 up to you. And once you do this, after doing all the algebraic manipulations, you should solve and find that P1 is equal to 63 over 146. So thus, the answer to this AMC 10 finale is answer choice C. Now this technique that we use in the problem is not only good for AMC 10 problems, but AMC 12 and Amy and other famous competitions like HMMT. This competition will help you when the probability is not really straightforward and the probability continuously changes or everything is dependent on the last. So if you ever feel like your counting and probability arsenal of techniques is not strong enough for the current level of math you're dealing with, look into techniques like counting with states or recursion or generating functions. And these techniques will help take your counting and probability skills to another level. So this is how we solved the 2014 AMC-10 finale, using a clever diagram and a systems of equation. So whenever dealing with a high level problem, just think about the high level concepts that you know and use them cleverly as they very well could help you solve them.